Far above the ground in a marvel of a lost age floats Sky City Fraser Omega 637. The adepts of the Mechanicum have secured within a valued piece of Xeno's technology. Commander Farsight is incensed that such valued Tau tech be stolen and is out to get it back at all costs. Incoming Xeno's aircraft, prepare defenses. This is 40K in 40 minutes. Welcome fans, your host JT McDowell here with another episode of Play on Tabletop's 40K in 40 Minutes Season 2. Today sees Tack in his newly minted Adeptus Mechanicus versus Taunik and you guessed it, his Tau. Our sponsor for today's battle is Deadly Print Studios. They are the designers of the amazing battle effects that you have all seen on our show many times. We are big fans of them and love the energy and dynamism that adds to our armies. Super glad to have them on board for this episode as sponsor. Be sure to check the link in the video description where you can order either the files or the prints ready to go. Be sure to tell them PlayOn sent you. This board today is built straight out of the imagination of our very own Nick Fraze. And what a battlefield it is. Literally a battle above the clouds. Tack and Nick have built some thematic lists to play this aerial invasion today with the mission based loosely around one of the new 40k missions. Four objective markers are placed roughly in the center of each table quarter, and players will score primary objective points starting on turn two for holding these objectives. Five for holding one, five more for holding two, and five more for holding more than your opponent to a maximum of 15 points per turn and a maximum of 45 points for the match. My name is Tack, I'm with Play on Tabletop, and I'm here to play my AdMech. The AdMech are a popular request on our channel, so I'm super excited to give it a try. I like AdMech because of the aesthetic. The, the AdMech, um, they just have a lot of cool sculpts. It's just like a really cool robotic aesthetic to it. Way better than Tau. I'm super excited to play them. Tack is running Adeptus Mechanicus, a new project for him and a return to an old favorite. He's running a Tech Priest Dominus at Tech Priest Maniplus, with some Catafron Breachers loaded with heavy arc rifles and some Catafron Destroyers with Phosphor Blasters and Plasma Culverins. Some Skitari Vanguard, Taraxi Skystalkers, Cerberus Sulphur Hounds, and Castellan Robots, Onager Dune Crawler, Scorpius Disintegrator, and then two of the new Flyers. Man, do I love these. The Archaeocopter Fusilave and the Archaeopter Stratoraptor. So today we get to put to bed the who shoots better, Adeptus Mechanicus or Tau. My name is Nicholas and I'm back again to play my Tau and I am excited. I always enjoy playing my Tau, but I've been really enjoying them since playing them after Psychic Awakening came out and I got those few new toys that just really let me play Tau like I wanted them to play. I've got crisis suits in my armies, I'm really mobile, it's gonna be a good game. Nick, in true Tau Nick fashion, has brought a Tau list that you won't see very often. Farsight Enclaves again with veteran Kadra in his crisis suits, a commander in a cold star and a commander in another cold star. One has the fusion blades, and the other has the pure tide Ingram chip. Two breacher teams as his close combat shooty dudes, his custom Vespid sting wings yet again make an appearance, and he's added a lot of heavy air support. Skyray gunship, Sun Shark bomber, Barracuda, and two Devilfish transports. Everything in my army flies. It either has its own jetpacks or it's arriving by jet powered transport. So it all makes sense how it arrived and it's all gonna fly on the table and attack his base. Apparently the AdMech have found some tech that the Tau believe is, is theirs. They stole my tech! So I'm going to be defending the base from a Tau airstrike. Looks like the players have chosen their secondary objectives and we have a complete mirror match. Both Tack and Nick have chosen Bring It Down, Attrition, and Engage on All Fronts. Attrition scores four victory points to the player that scores more killed units at the end of each turn. With both players choosing the Kill More option, we're definitely in for a firefight, and this single secondary may be the deciding factor. 
deployment is going to be table quarters. Top right for Tack and bottom left for Nick with a 9 inch no go zone in the middle. Couple key things for this match regarding terrain. The boys have decided that the clouds are impassable to all but flying units with the exception of the Admech hover tanks as the Adeptus Mechanicus have rigged up partial anti-grav units to float on the super dense clouds. However, any other unit will not be able to land in the clouds unless it can fly. Nick is attacking and Tack is defending, so Tack will deploy the first unit and has placed his Taraxi Skystalkers in reserve using their Thermal Riders rule. Nick has placed his Vespid into reserves using their Plunge from the Sky rule, and his Blue Breachers are in the Blue Transport, and the Red Breachers are in the Red Transport. Just like he planned it or something. Tack! Haha! -ha. So Finally, we meet again. We are. I feel like so short because this thing is so tall. <laughs> Hi guys! <laughs> We're in the clouds! <laughs> so first off, we get to choose dice. We get to choose dice. Um, uh, and why so, is this important, Dak? Why uh, do you care which dice they are? <laughs> so there, there have been now superstitions with play on dice <laughs> about how well they roll ones and how well they roll sixes. And it appears to be that people are saying the orange dice tend to perform better if they are uh, played by the Imperium. Right, and if you're playing the black dice as Imperium, you are doomed. Good thing I'm not playing the Imperium. I will take the orange, and I guess you're black. And ha -ha. We'll see what happens. Sulfur hounds are deployed inside of that building. Planes can move fairly fast here. You know what? I will meet your flyer with a flyer. I'll yeah, bring it on. We are going to have an aerial dogfight. We are. All right, well, let's go for the next plane, and also, uh, hey, this is my bomber. And my bomber is gonna um, start a little bit closer to the. Sure, let's just put our flyers down. This one is the bomber as well. Transport number one. Ooh, we can hide in the clouds here. That's kind of fun, actually. You get to. A six man squad of breachers. Uh, I also have breachers. And my breachers are to... not as good as your breachers. No. The unit that I'm kind of scared of is his breachers, they're infantry. And they're tough infantry. They are hard to take out compared to my squishy soldiers. So I've got to take them out because he can hold objectives better than I can with them. Uh, this is the Manipulus. Oh, this will be interesting. I can put these guys, I just hide it right here. You can hide it. You can't even see it. Plus my guys are gonna go inside of there. Uh, they're kind of standing on top of the barricades. Taking a look at the boys' deployment here, and it's not much of a surprise. It's definitely going to be a shooting battle, and there's a distinct advantage to Nick's flying units as he does have the run of the board. He has to be careful, though. Should his Devilfish transports be destroyed out in the clouds where his infantry cannot reach land, they will plummet from the sky. Is he allowed to walk through that explosion? Yeah. All right. Sure. My last unit here I got for deployment here is my crisis suits, and they are going to hide in the clouds and the smoke right over here. Uh, the Onager Doomcrawler is... Uh... Oh, I hate that thing. That thing's scary. This looks great, man. I'm excited to play this. This looks awesome. This is going to be a cool battle. Tax starts the game with 11 command points, spending one on an extra Warlord train. Nick starts the game with seven command points. Having bought an extra Warlord trade on his Cold Star to reroll wounds versus vehicles, he's upgraded his Crisis Suits to a Veteran Cadre, and he has taken three relics, Fusion Blades on his Commander, Pure Tide Engram Neurochip to regain command points, and finally countermeasures on the Crisis Suit Squad, reducing AP to two to zero when being shot at. We get to roll to see who goes first. Oh, this is big. This is big. Whoever uh, goes first has a little bit of advantage here, although going second means you can react. Yeah. Right? Um, which I think is huge in this edition. Though that being said, both of us have very, very high I'm... volume damage dealing armies. So. Obviously. And neither of us can take a punch really hard. No, uh, both of us are kind of running glass cannons. Yeah. So we'll see what happens here. So which glass cannon will break first? We'll see. Here we go. <laughs> and that's a wow, six. Wow, all right. The roll to go first, and Nick has won the roll and will elect to go first. Tack has countered with the Shroud Saw Mechanical to count everything in cover this turn, hoping to keep them alive for a solid counter strike, I'm sure. 
So at the beginning of my command phase, I generate a command point, bringing mm -hmm. me to eight. Do I want to call Montka? Advance and fire normally. You asked me to paint up all those plans, and now you're just going to pull them I'm off gonna the table. I'm going to try to blow them off the table before first I turn get here. To use them. I'm not going to call Montka. Rises from the clouds. My uh, devilfish here. The guys inside are not going to get out, but I'm going to advance sure. five inches. Sure. Black dice aren't rolling hot at all. Ah, oh, Vaxxus is doing great. <laughs> hey, you chose which dice you want. I did. Ah, take that. Pew, 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 pew. The, the drones here are going to disembark so that they can go take this objective here. And then this unit. <sighs> okay, and so as he flies over that unit of breachers, yep. he's going to drop a bomb on those breachers. You got six there? I do. So I get to roll six dice. Yep. And because they're infantry, on fours is a mortal wound. So three, three mortal wounds to that Ooh. unit. All right. Nick's movement is fairly aggressive here, and he's spreading out in order to really hem Tack in. It's not a bad idea at all. If he can hurt Tack bad enough here, he can really make his task of victory substantially easier. So my crisis suit unit is going to advance, mm -hmm. and they're going to advance four inches. Mm -hmm. It's too scary to get too close this round. Maybe I wanted to go second. <laughs> OK, so he'll fly. That's a lot of firepower coming away. Let's see if I can reduce some of that. Step one, fire marker lights. <laughs> Nick, you remembered to fire your marker lights first. It's a moment I don't think he'll ever live down from way back in season one. I'm gonna spend one CP. Hmm? This copter right hmm? there hmm? counts as having one marker light already on it. Do I get that marker light back on a six? I do not. I'm going to fire his two marker lights at that one, all of his seekers at that one, and his smart missile systems. So I'm gonna shoot at these little little infantry dudes there. Let's start with those first, all but two. And uh, strength five, so no, nothing. Curse of the black dice. Then we're gonna do marker lights. Uh, hits once, so one marker light. Yep. So I've got two on there. Yep. All right, I'm spending one CP to do the stratagem network marker lights in the hopes of getting, I only got one, so I got one marker light on it. Take one marker light more on that unit, oh, taking it to three. Now the Sky Ray is going to fire all the Seeker missiles at that copter. So six of them, all but one. Ooh. So on threes, so two. Oh, that's terrible. AP. I'm going to reroll one of these. Do I wound? I do. So three wounds at minus two. So five ups. I make one. All right, two D6 damage. Yep. Four, five, six, seven. Okay. Next, my bomber there. Yep is going to target everything into that same unit. Okay, so now the Seeker missiles, uh, both miss. Okay. Four shots from his missile pods. Three hits. Yep, we're on fours. One at minus one. So four up. Nope, that's a one. D3 damage, uh, does three. Uh, does three, yeah, I should've command pointed it. Yeah, well. Explode! Ah, nope. oh, so close. close. There it is, ba -ba -ba boom there goes the Archaeopter. Tack didn't even get to move it. Beautiful paint job, though. My commander here yep. is going to target your other copter. Okay. So hitting on twos normally, but you are obviously hard to hit. So yep. hitting on threes. Okay. Hits three times. Yep. On, on threes, threes, two wounds okay. at minus four. Brings me to a six up because of uh, cover. Yeesh. I mean, ah, come on. All right, one D6 damage. <laughs> what one. damage. Right. He has the Pure Tide Ingram Neurochip, which in addition to letting me get CP back on sixes, can also give me one reroll of a damage roll or a wound roll, etc. So okay. I'm gonna reroll the damage roll right now with that. Okay. And it's another one. All right. <laughs> All right, so last thing to fire is my Barracuda. It's gonna first spend a command point, go okay. back down to four, go down to four yep. for modulated weaponry, because okay. I'm going to overcharge his ion cannon to fire at full shots instead of D6 shots. Okay. The Barracuda is going to fire at the breachers with the blue guns, because the they blue guns look like my guns. It looks like you stole that tech. <laughs> I want it back. So it gets six shots with his main, main gun, yep. hitting on threes, and it hit three times. Yep. Can't roll ones because I don't have any marker lights on you. Because I rolled a one on overcharging, he does take a wound from that. So I've taken one wound on the Barracuda. I've done two wounds to you. <laughs> yeah, you have done two At strength eight minus two. Uh, so I am in cover, so I've got a four up save. I save one. Flat three damage. Okay, uh, so kills one. Okay, well, I'm holding three of the objectives. You are? I think it's going to be hard for you to shift me off those. Probably. And uh, that's all I can do at this point. I'm not going to declare any charges. 
So it goes to you, sir. And a turn, uh, Nick scores two points for bring it down, three points for engage at all fronts, giving him a mid-turn score of five, and he has four command points remaining. Uh, all right, so at the beginning of my turn, uh, in my command phase, I get uh, a command point. And then I get to select my Warlord traits. So uh, I'm going to, with my Warlord, uh, everything within six inches of him, uh, a six to hit results in an additional hit. I think it's going to be a bad turn. So. I think it's going to be a very bad turn. So then the Sulfur Hounds are going to pop over here because they move fairly quickly. I think you'll have a hard time hopefully seeing them. That gives my server towards a clear lane to move up. Tack has weathered Nick's Firestorm pretty well. He's got to be pleased that he lost so little. I mean, yes, he lost the Archaeopter, but two Breachers in a plane isn't bad at all. He seems content with his placement of units, and why not? Those Castellans can shoot a ton. Move up a little bit. He's going to... And then the plane. So the cool thing about these planes is that they can pivot twice. Okay, I'm going to burn one command point on... Do I get it? I do not. Bin Herrick Overdrive on the Cataphrons. I'm going to put them into their Destroyer Protocol. Basically, it doubles <laughs> all of their heavy weapon shots. Oh, that's but really can, good. But they can no longer move for the entire battle. Oh, so oh, you mean they, like, they're stuck there. They're just stuck there. They plant there. their feet yep. and they fire away. That's a really yep. cool image. Uh, my Manipulus did not move, which yep. means everything within six inches of them gains an extra six inches on their Oh, uh, that is great range. placement for them. I'm going to burn two command points, so I'm going down to nine. I'm going to Elimination Volley. One Castellan robot uh, squad, hmm. and one of either Breacher or Destroyer gets plus one to hit. I'm going to give that to the Haywire guys. Cataphron Destroyers are going to go into the Devilfish Transport. Okay. So I'm going to see how many shots I get. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to need to do these separately because uh, I am going to overcharge them. And they could die on ones. They could die on ones. Uh, okay. I do have a reroll one because I'm within range of the, uh, the Warlord. Three is rerolling ones. So rerolling one. Come on, one, one, one. Nope. A lot of plasma going into the Devilfish. Nine wounds and AP3 means Nick's going to need sixes and take 16 damage. Does he explode? Please do. Ah, I did not explode. That would be cool though. See if any die from from the vehicle getting wrecked. I lost two guys. That's three points, bring it down for Tack. Good, good start here. How important is it to take out those that Breacher squad? It is really important for me to knock you off of that objective, actually. Yeah, currently I hold three objectives. Yep, so everything from this guy is going to go into that eight-man squad. Cop. Three, two, three shots. Uh, that is two, three, four, wounding on twos. So three or four ups. Save two, one guy bites it. Ah! Tax shoots a lot, and he manages to kill more this turn as well. Nick's having too much fun for his units dying. Wee! Oh, no, into the clouds! No, 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 no. Uh, the Onager is going to fire into your... I think it's going to go into your Barracuda. Makes sense. So because the Onager is a guitar unit, I'm going to burn a command point uh, and make it hit one better. Twin Icarus autocannon is going to go into him, the Gatling rocket launcher will go into him, and the Daedalus missile launcher will go into him. Okay, fire away. You got a five up and vulnerable? Nope, yep. goes through. Uh, D6 damage. Oh. One, I am going to command point reroll that. Three damage. Seven damage, not bad. So you've done half. One more wound to bracket him. These are the breachers. They're going to shoot at the uh, bomber. All right. You know what? Two of them will go into the Barracuda. So six into the bomber, two into the Barracuda. Into the Barracuda. Two hits, two wounds. I save one, one goes through. Uh, D6 damage. <laughs> Five. Oh! The Barracuda's brought down to two wounds left. Two onto the, uh, the bomber. And uh, no, no wound. One robot is going to go into the breachers. Breachers, squad. try to finish it off. Yep. One squad is going to go into the uh, drones. Drones. Yep. And the other one is going to go into the barracuda. barracuda. Hey, you can kill three units this round. That'd be amazing. I killed one unit on my turn. Um, each one of these robots, uh, they are three-shot phosphor weapons. Become six shots each. I get this many shots per robot. Wow. So these ones will go into the uh, breacher squad. Okay. Hitting on threes, we're rolling ones. That's, That's a, a lot, lot of twos. twos. Oh, this can save me. And it's AP one. Oh, okay. wow. Seven, eight. 
Uh, I saved two, but the rest are squashed. This one's going to your drones? Yep. <laughs> Should I even bother? No, nah, I'm just gonna take them off. You killed them. That's okay. a lot of shots. Okay, and then this is going to the... Uh, the Barracuda. I'm gonna be hitting on fours, re-rolling ones. Okay. Uh, one, two, at EP uh, one, or EP two, sorry. On fives. Ah, you killed him! Does he crash and burn? Nope. Okay. Uh, yeah. Poor Nick, no explosions today. Archaeoraptor is going to put everything into into your warlord. All right, yeah. bring it on. Let's see it. Both hit with the last cannon. So yep. wounding on threes. Uh, one goes through. Okay, so four up. Say that. Shields. Shields. Heavy phosphor blaster. I've got two of them, so that's six shots. String six, so wounding on threes. Uh, that is five at AP two. AP two. So on fours again. Or right, yeah, uh, three go through. Uh, one damage each. One damage each, so taking three of six. Cognis Heavy Subber, um, and I've got two of them as well. I think it's a lot of guns. And then wounding on fives. Uh, one no EP. Free up. Nope. Goes through. Wow. Okay. He's taking four of six. Okay. Two left. Uh, um, so I'm going to fire an arc rifle at you as well as one guy is in range to hit you. Um, so I might as well try. That's this unit here. Yep. Three hits, and then wounding on fives. Uh, it is a six, however, so this will do two damage instead of one if you don't save it. On this guy? Yep. Okay, on three ups. Oh! Okay, so it's gonna kill him if I don't save this. I, yeah. Okay, I need to command point reroll this. Sure. So I will spend a command point. Do I get it back? Sure. I do. Okay, I need a three up. You do. Yeesh. Ah! No! <laughs> no! Oh, man. That sucks, he was gonna kill your, uh, that's my Warlord? He was gonna kill your Flyer. Ah. Uh, three, they're D6 shots each. Okay, so you're targeting the, targeting uh, the Crisis Suits? Crisis Suits. Okay. So that is six, seven, uh, 11 hits. I'm winning on fives. Uh, one, uh, only two. I'm taking him on the one with has Iridium Armor okay. and the Countermeasures uh, Relic, so I ignore AP one and zero, and two. Okay. So I save them both. Okay. And it turns, sees tax score six points for bring it down, four points for attrition, and two for engage at all fronts. And it turn, we've got a score 12 5 in favor of attack. Not looking great for Nick here. Start at turn two, and Nick is kind of up against it. Tax Counter Strike was pretty devastating. Start of the command phase, he's going to gain a command point and go up to five, and he's going to score 15 primary points. I've lost a lot of my army already, and it's only turn two. So. Instead of playing Monka, let's play Kayun, the patient hunter. I've got lots of clouds to hide in and lots of fly to use. Let's take advantage of that. Okay, so at the beginning of this phase, I think I will call Montka with this guy dude, dude right here. Okay. So my cold star is calling Montka, which means I can advance and fire normally. Yep. And the first thing he's gonna do is book it 40 inches. For my plane? For your plane. What? What did my plane do to you? Live. <laughs> And he's gonna hide right here in the in the, in the oh. clouds, so you can't see him. And he's gonna fire up into your head. Oh, you are using terrain to your advantage. <laughs> see, the beautiful thing about Tao is, even though they are honorable warriors, it is not cowardly to hide. It is true tactics for the greater good. Drones are gonna get out, mm -hmm. and they are gonna hide. Fairly confident you won't be able to see them here. Hide as well. <laughs> wow. Okay. I love clouds. Look at that. Let's hide. You're getting okay. so many points for my transports. Why am I going to give them to you? Yeah, that is true. My crisis suits are going to advance. They advance four inches. Yep. I think we're going to go use my jetpacks and <laughs> leisurely blow you to death. Pew, 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 pew. I think Monk was kind of useless in this, in this case. One inches. If I go up here. Yeah. Okay. So they're going to advance. Four inches, and they're gonna go up here. Okay. And then lastly, this flyer has to unfortunately fly off the table. But he'll be back next he'll round. He'll be back. I will now bring in my Vespid, I think. Okay, you want to, absolutely. Why? I don't think there's any point. I need things to shoot. 
Yeah, I'm not going to bring in my best bid. Best bid are going to stay off the table for one more round. <laughs> Don't let me play mind games with you. Now into my favorite turn, the shooting phase. Yep. Skip the psychic phase. All right, we're going to start with him. He's going to fire some marker lights into this dude here. Sure. He's going to uh, fire. Hard to hit, so minus one. And he's going to fire. Yes, he'll fire smart missiles into here. Sure. Marker lights first. Plus, plus one as well, so on threes. Sure. So it's two, two hits. You got two marker lights on you there. Sure. And then smart missile system. And hits them all. Yeah, he does. Wow, it's a lot of sixes. And uh, strength five, so on fives, yep. three wounds. Uh, make them both. No okay. AP, right? Sorry? No AP, right? No AP. Bander's gonna shoot into you. He's got three fusion blasters. Hits you three times. Yep. Strength eight. Yep. On threes. Wounds you three times yep. at minus four. Minus four, go right through. All right, melt a range. So the first one, it's... first one does <sighs> double six damage. First one does six damage. The second one does six damage. The third one does Six damage! That is five sixes! <laughs> what are you saying about the orange dice again? So much for Curse of the Black Dice. That's a massive 18 damage. Minus one each for the chaff launchers on the Archaeopter. Still 15's more than it could take. Boom! Over here. Lots and lots of shots from Nick here, and he's chewing up tax outliers really well. He's almost completely cleared tax four elements out of his face, and that's going to be important for him to maintain board control. All right, and I'm not going to do any charges this round, so that was a very quick round for me. Nick scores three more for Bring It Down, and with those sneaky drones and tax grill, he scores three more for Engage in All Fronts to give him a total of 15 primary and 11 secondary for a total of 26 points. Gives us a score of 26-12 mid-turn two. Tack holds one objective to start for five primary points, but more concerning is with those Castellans locked down, Tack's not going to be able to maneuver very well, as he has minimal ability to threaten deep into Nick's lines, having lost both planes. He's going to have a hard time scoring engaged at all fronts the rest of the game because of that, and I think he'll need to focus on primaries and keep Nick from scoring as much as possible to win this. Ooh, dropping his Taraxi on that objective is a smart play. That's going to force Nick to deal with him, and the Taraxi aren't easy to ship with two wounds each, a four-up save, and a six-up invul. I forgot you guys, those guys. Going into shooting, this gun will fire into those shield drones. I figured. It's the only shot you got in them. Yeah. So Kill the drones! Uh, wounding on uh, threes. All right, so one drone is alive! Wow. Wow. That, uh, wow. Hold the objective with one lone drone. All right, Steven, impartial judge judge here. Can this guy see this guy? Yep. There we go. All right, blast him off the table. Oh, those poor drones. So many guns. Much overkill. Plasma guys are going to just fire their shots into the shield drones. Yep. Because they're only one, one wound each, right? They're one wound each, yep. Okay. So, how many plasma shots? I'm not going to overcharge. Okay. Uh, that is threes. Ooh, only two. On a four up. Saves it. Okay. Second one. Saves it. Okay. Ah, shield drones for the win. I think that is it because you gave me no targets. I gave you very little targets this turn. Uh, I was playing KG. What a massive swing there. Nick scores the four points for attrition and Tack only manages two for engage at all fronts. That makes a score at the end of two, 15 primary for Nick and 15 secondary for a total of 30 to tax five primary and 14 secondary for a total of 19. 30 to 19 at the end of two, this is anyone's game. Nick gains a command point to go to six. However, Tack has locked him out of all the objectives. He scores no primary objective points then. That is absolutely huge. Let's see what I can do. Okay, uh, canticles, um, I will declare the one where if you kill any of my, any of these guys, mm -hmm. on a five up, they get to attack before they die. First things first, the commander here is gonna jump up and very ballsy. He's gonna come hit you with his sword. Sure. <laughs> Tough going here for Nick. He needs to be very careful he doesn't poke his head out too far. Tack has locked a massive part of the table out from him around those Castellans. He really can't put anything in front of them where it's just gonna evaporate. Here come the crisis suits that really don't want to die. Okay, the breachers are gonna get out. Ooh, more targets. You're not in a position where I can do anything with them. Uh, says the guy that put all of his planes down below the clouds. <laughs> you get to say nothing about being a uh, KG, sir. All right, so this flyer comes in nine inches from any table edge. 
He's gonna go over here. Five Vespid here. It is time for boldness. So they're gonna fly up here. Okay. Time for boldness indeed, Nick. Going for the greater goodness. Shooting phase. Yep. Starting with marker lights. Yep. I'm gonna spend one CP to start off with. Good start with marker lights. Spends a command point to aerial target the Taraxi, so he's down to five command points now. His Skyray tags a couple more marker lights and then launches its smart missiles in. One dice. One command point in the Vespid now for Reign of Fire, gaining rerolls to all that it hit rolls. That's a lot of guns. Five wounds of minus two. Uh, I make two. Okay, so you kill one and one's down to one. So this one is... Next, my commander. Fire at the Onager Dunecrawler right in front of him sure. with three fusion blasters. Sure. Hit on twos, we're rolling ones because I'm within six inches of you. Sure. All right, we're rolling ones. All hits. Okay. Yep. Uh, because I'm within six inches, I reroll ones to wound and a strength eight. Okay. That three wounds. Yep. Minus four. Uh, five in bone. <laughs> of course you get one. Commander on the Onager does some serious fusion work again. Tax trying to save it and spends a command point on a reroll for no joy. He's down to seven command points, and that Onager's going down. Ha ha! But for one command point, Tack uses the Machine Spirit's Revenge and blows it up on purpose. That takes him to six command points, does three mortal wounds to Nick's Cold Star battle suit. However, Nick's gained three victory points for killing the Onager. All right, next. Okay. Uh, we will shoot this guy. Mm -hmm into the Breacher Squad there. Okay. He's got okay. a Marker Light first. Okay. The Marker Light fails to hit. Yep. Missile Pons, he's got four shots from them. Chewing through the Cataphrons is really tough cheddar here for Nick, and Tack is making just enough saves to keep them in it. It's up to the Crisis Suits to try and get them out of there. All right, my two Marker Drones there are gonna target the the, the Breacher Squad over there. The Destroyers? Yep. Okay. Hits twice. Yep. Two Markers on them. Okay. All these uh, all these Crisis are gonna shoot into the Destroyers. Um, your T5, you said? I am T5. I yes. am gonna overcharge because I have two marker lights on you. Okay. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten at minus two. So six ups. Kill him! Uh, I make two. Is that all of them? That's all of them. Awesome. <laughs> on a five up, uh, they shoot you back. Oh, of course they do. Uh, they don't. And they've done it! Took a lot of firepower to do it, but those cataphrons are out. All right, so that is my shooting. Mm -hmm. We're gonna go into the, the combat phase, mm -hmm. uh, fight phase, and I'm actually gonna do some charging. First thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna declare a charge from my Vespid, nine inches away into your, your other flying dudes. Here we go, charge! Six, not enough. I'm tempted to reroll that. I think I will reroll that. So okay. um, I use one command point, I'm down to three. I had to get a nine, four, five, six, seven, not enough. Next, I will use my commander to try to charge into those same guys. Uh, he's got three wounds remaining, right? He's got three wounds remaining. Uh, I, will, I will overcharge. Okay, you will so overwatch. I'm gonna, and I'm hitting on fives because I'm at Kirpina. Uh, two. Two, three ups. Save them both. Okay. So three, my commander two. charges in and gets in. Yep. All right, next, my um, crisis suits are gonna charge the infantry down here. Okay, rolled up once. <laughs> Charge! That's a four. Yeah, that's good. All right. And that's all the charges I got. Okay. Let's fight. Okay. Where do you want to go first? I want to slice you up with my commander over here. Okay, go ahead. All right, so he gets two strikes from his fusion blade. Oh, and Nick's commander manages only a single wound. Oh, no! Okay. Next, crisis suits. Injured okay. guys there. They're veterans, so they're gonna have fours. They get three attacks each. All those crisis suits should munch those infantry, but good. And does one wound at minus one. So you got two guys left there? Yep. I uh, guess that's my turn. I get to fight back. You get to fight back. So these guys will fight back. Jack's fighting back here, and he manages two wounds on the Cold Star, but he's still alive with one wound remaining. Morale phase. See if you run away here. I'd like you to run one guy right here. And uh, I'd like that squad so to run So I'm going to burn three command points, and they're going to auto pass. <laughs> of course they are. Uh, well done. done. Oh, see if you guys run away. Uh, yep. So I lost four. Their leadership is seven. Nope. They're nope, good. They're good. They're good. They like it. All right. Talk to me about how much I hate two-man infantry squads. How much do you hate two-man? I really hate two-man infantry squads. Oh my goodness. Why couldn't those guys die? Mid-turn and Nick has scored three more for engage in all fronts and three more for bring it down bringing his secondary score to 21. Added to his primary total of 15 gives Nick 36 points. 
Attacks got 19 mid turn, and this should be interesting. Start attacks turn 3, and he scores 10 for primary, giving him primary score of 15 at the turn. He also goes up to 4 command points. So they're gonna fall back. I'm going to cut them down. I'm gonna spend 1 CP to cut you down as you run away. Then each of them are gonna get a chance to cut you down on a 6. Yep. I got no sixes. Okay. So the way, so you run away. All right. He's got two command points left, and that was a bit of a desperation move, but you can see why. If he can kill that objective secure unit, he has control of that corner. You've made sure that I can't see much. I tried. I'm going to burn uh, two command points. Elimination protocols again for TAC here uh, on the Castellan and Catafron for plus one to hit. I'm going to spend two command points. Yep. On, um, on making these guys yep. minus one to hit. And Nick uses his favorite stratagem, the NeuroWeb Jammer. However, Nick's out of command points till the start of his next turn, and Tack is down to two. Um, all right, so into your commander first. Those Castellan robots are ripping Nick a new Aunva. So many shots. Ah! <laughs>You got one wound on him. Got it through. D3. Okay. Don't uh, kill him. I can't kill him, right? Can I? Nine, tell him 12. Yes, you can. You get a three. <laughs> That's okay. cocked. Try again. Oh, oh, there we go. Oh, man. I wish I had a command point. Uh, yeah. Crash and burn. No, he doesn't explode. Cold Star's down, and so is the Sun Shark. Oh, for a command point reroll, huh, Nick? Tax scores three points for bring it down, and two more for engage at all fronts, bringing his secondary total to 19. Bind with his primary puts us at a score of 36 for Nick to 34 for Tack going into turn 4. Alright, so start of my command phase. Whew, this is going to be tight. I gotta, gotta do lots of things. Start of the all-important turn 4 and Nick's going to score 10 for primary and he gains a command point, taking him to 1. Let's do it. Alright, the Vespid need to book it. They move 14 inches. Sure. So they're going to come in close and take this objective for you. My breachers are going to very foolishly advance. They're not going to steal it? I'm not afraid. Nope, they're going to advance. Okay. And they're going to advance four inches, which is just enough. Breachers move up and pulse onslaught in shooting, hoping to dislodge those Castellan robots and protect the rest of his army. It's a gutsy move here, and it actually may cost him the game. He's way out in the open, and those Castellans shoot so much, if they don't go down, they're just going to wreck Nick's remaining forces. Eight uh -oh. inches. Not in trouble. Dun, 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 dun. Shooting phase. I'm going to spend my last CP on Pulse Onslaught from these Breachers, which means that their normal 5-inch threat range becomes 15. Sure. But I'm going to shoot with Marker Lights first. He's going to start with his Marker Lights. Sure. He's going to fire two Marker Lights into this squad. Sure. He's also going to fire his Smart Missile Systems into these guys here. Sure. So start with Marker Lights into the Castellan Robots. I hit you. None. Bummer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next, I'm going to shoot my smart missiles. Two wounds at minus two. Two wounds at minus two. So they go up to their six up in bone. Uh, make one. Mm, these guys are pretty. How much damage? Pretty good. Just one. Uh, so one's down to one. My breachers are going to fire at the Castellan robots with their pulse on flash. This is at minus two. One, two, three, four, five, six at minus two. And yep. any sixes bounces a mortal wound back at you. Really? Yeah. Wow. Wow. <laughs> so uh, I make three saves, uh, one mortal wound on you. Blah. And three Blah. go through. Those crisis suits are all going to shoot into that robot squad. Sure. Um, the one guy with um, air bursting fragmentation grenade launcher thing here is going to fire at <laughs> the two infantry that are remaining there. Oh. You didn't forget about them? Nope. All right. So D6 shots on the air bursting. Get two. Hitting on threes. Miss them both. Okay. So, overcharging on the cyclic ion blasters. Overcharging his crisis suits to do damage that he needs, but he's managed two dead Castellans. Not bad at all. One's down to two wounds. He's still got one guy left there. Yep. Ah! Oh, best bid are charging into these guys. Okay. Do they get in? They do. And lastly, I'm going to charge into those infantry there. Five. Is that enough to get in there? Yeah, I guess so. All right. So, the crisis suit fly around the the wreckage in there, and they crash into your two remaining infantry models. I hit you twice, and nothing. Sure. Wow. All right, Vespid, let's do it. Starting to get two attacks. Each of the other guys get one attack. Vespid hit you in fours. They fail everything. Well, that okay. sucks. Uh, four, no AP. Okay, four ups. One dies. And then the other guy hits once. Uh, does nothing. 
Four more points for Nick on Bring It Down, and three more on Gage on all fronts, puts his current total to 53 mid-turn four. Five primary points for Tack, as well as another command point. Like I said, he's up to three. Move phase, and he doesn't have a lot in it. He's got some tactical options here for sure. Falling back and leaving those Vespid open to get shot up real good is one of them. As well, he can move his Katari under the objective that Nick holds with his Devilfish, and he's going to deny Nick points. And so they're falling back, but they're going to fall back so that they're within range of that objective. Uh, I will burn two command points for going and doing an elimination uh, volley. Single Castle Robot. Uh, and these guys are going to be hitting on threes. There's the elimination volley again. What a great strategy. He's used that three times this game. Plus one to hit his Catafron and the remaining Castell, and this may not go well for Nick. Ah, it's gone! Ah! Oh, boom goes the Skyray. That's going to be three for Bring It Down, but more importantly, it takes Nick off that objective. Huge point denial. I'm going to fire six shots uh, into the bigger Breacher squad, but I'm going to fire 12 shots into the Vespid. Eight at AP2. And uh, minus two? Minus two. So on sixes. So you killed one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, they're all good. Okay. Ah! Okay, then the six into the breacher squad. Cover that. Set five at AP2, no cover. On sixes. Nope, killed five guys. Okay. Yeah, you knocked me off with all the objectives. Good work. What a great turn for Tack. He's got two for engage at all fronts, three for bring it down, and four for attrition, giving him a total of 48 to Nick's total of 53, but he's cleared Nick of every objective. Nick will not score primary points this turn and needs to stop Tack from doing the same on his turn five or he's going to lose. What a matchup. Next turn five, he gains a command point, but moving those breachers out has proved to be his undoing here. He gave up an objective and he's in serious trouble. No primary points this turn, so he's only going to max out at his current 25, and he has to deny tax scoring here. I got to protect my transport so that yep. he doesn't die, because that yep. gives you points. Yep. I got to knock you off that objective and score yep. some points somehow. I don't know if I can do this, so I've got to kill that tank. You do have to try to kill this tank. Yes. I got to kill that tank. That's all I've got going for me. Yep. You got to knock you off the objective and kill that tank. Yep. He'll be flying in the crowds. This is really, really tough. How do I do this? All right, so my breachers are gonna advance one inch, glorious one inch, to get seven inches, that's not enough for them. So I need to command point reroll that. Two, it's not enough either. By moving that devilfish onto that objective, instead of dropping to the bottom objective and then maybe shooting at the Taraxi off the other one, he's all but guaranteed that Tack is going to get 15 primary points next turn and he's worried about the three for Bring It Down. All right, shooting. All right, so the two crisis suits are gonna shoot at the Castellan. Yep. And I'm gonna shoot the Fragmentation Grenade again at those two guys in the hopes of killing them. Yep. Okay, so D6 shots, five. Yep, off to a better start. Yep, uh, hits you once, one wound. Uh, nope, I take it. Okay. And then um, Plasma and Cyclics into the last Castellan robot, overcharging. Yeah, Nick scores two more for Bring It Down on his turn. To give him a score of 14 on that secondary, a total of 55 points. But, Tack's gonna score 15 on primary. That's gonna take him to 63, and Nick is not gonna be able to catch him. Even if I get attrition, so that wins you the game! That wins me the game. Well I done! Didn't see that coming. I oh. thought I was gonna lose. That was a tight one. That was, that was a really, really, tight. really tight one. That was well, a good game. Good game, Tack. Thanks for, thanks for beating me so soundly. Our final score, with 10 points for fully painted for both forces, is gonna be Tack 73 and Nick 65. That's a tough go, Nick. I'm sure you're never gonna make that kind of mistake again. You're too good a player. Well, that wraps it up. I'd like to thank Nick Fraze and Tak Kawana, our players, and to this episode's sponsor, Deadly Print Studios. Be sure to check out their link in the description. I'd also like to thank you, our fans, for watching. From all of us here at Play on Tabletop, this is JT McDowell saying, until next time you see us in the grimdark universe of the far-flung future, play on.